Okay, so just a quick update to where I'm at at the moment, just had some uh, fiddling here. Now I've got what I would call very limited experience as far as uh, D-Star activity. Uh, like I said, I've had limited uh, experience with the uh, relatively local repeater, uh, but again it's very limited, uh, I would say sort of under a couple of hours uh, at the very most, and I think I've had possibly two QSOs uh, via D-Star. So the the I guess the programming of the radios is still relatively new to me, uh, and I was a bit concerned that the I guess the protocol for for programming the radios for the for the node adapter was going to be a little bit different. But the good news is what I'm finding is it's fairly straightforward. I was initially disappointed and a little bit panicked to find that there wasn't really any instructions as far as connecting nodes, etc., uh, or at least your you know your hotspots. Um, but because it seems to follow the the same protocol, like I said said pardon me of um you know linking uh through a normal gateway or a repeater <coughs> um it doesn't appear there needs to be what i have done and just to give you a quick little look um so i've got uh dv uh, node running up in the corner there and what i wanted to do i was certainly able to connect to different gateways um hopefully you can see that over here on the left um by manually uh, selecting the gateway I wanted here, um, choosing which port I wanted, connecting via D plus protocol, uh, and then just saving it, and then just clicking on connect over here. Whilst that's great, um, like I said, the reason I went with this was because I wanted to be able to uh, <coughs> include some sort of RF. I want to be able to use my HT or be able to connect through my hotspot uh, through my mobile, uh, you know, out in the car when I'm driving around, and, and that was the sole purpose. So I needed to be able to control the uh, the hot spot via RF, via the HT when I'm remote to it, and I didn't want to have to only be able to link to you know to reflectors and and, and other repeaters around the world. I guess that you know the, the, the main purpose of using D Star um, and having to be sitting in front of my PC. So I set my mind to trying to figure out how to do that, and like I said, the the I guess the programming convention is, is pretty much identical to normal D Star. And now this is the programming uh, software here. And we'll just see whether that's going to zoom and give you a better look. This is the programming software here for the uh, AD, sorry, the the IC ninety one AD ICOMs. Um, one of the original, well, the original, one of the earlier model uh, HTs for for D Star, which I picked up relatively cheap, and they're available relatively cheap uh, second hand if you you spot them. What I've been doing is um, just programming up the radio to see whether I can link and unlink. And here's some other programming that I downloaded uh, and installed just to basically, I guess, reverse engineer in my own mind uh, to understand how to operate and how to program a radio. Um, so using all that sort of stuff, what I've done here, and, and just to give you an idea, um, so for D-Star you require a, a couple of different inputs. You're going to need obviously the frequency that you're going to transmit on. Um, I guess this is probably one of the best things about these star but and also a bit of a curse as well. So anyway, uh, so there's the frequency. We're, we're doing it on simplex, um, obviously because we're not talking to a repeater. Um, we're in DV. Now the name is obviously just what's going to show up, uh, or the tag, or the name of the, the bank selection, or the memory selection that we're going to use. Um, just give it a name, something that means something to you. Uh, most of the times, nine out of ten, you're probably going to use the repeater, or you're going to specify whether it's a link command or an unlink command or something along those lines, like this one here. A bit further over, this is where all the activity happens. Basically, there's four bits of information. Generally, is a rule that you're going to need to use. You're going to need to use your call sign, or obviously in in a radio when you're programming, it's going to refer to it as my call because it's my call when you're using your radio. Uh, repeater 1, um, that's where you go in. Uh, repeater 2, which is where you go out. Uh, and then effectively your call sign or the call sign of the person who you're trying to communicate with. <clears throat> um, in this instance, and to get a little bit trickier, what we actually want to do is connect up to reflector 1. Um, and we want to connect up to port C, which as mentioned before is our 2 metre port. Uh, or um, band module I think they refer to it as as well um, so what you'll see here is I'm saying I want to connect up to reflector 1 um, this here tells me or instructs the radio that I want to connect up to port C 
which is the two meter module. Um, and the L here uh, in the eighth character uh, dictates what we actually want to do. And that says L to link. So we're saying we want to connect up to a reflector one on the, t on the two meter port and we want to link to it. Um, now as far as the hotspot goes uh, and controlling it via RF, again like I said the convention seems to follow uh, if you were going to dial through a, a repeater with a gateway. So in this instance I've registered VK2MRXC because I think I'm going to be using this uh, on the 2 meter band. Um, I'm going to do some testing and, and see which works out better for me, whether I'm better off to go with 70 SEMs or whether I want to go with 2 meters. Uh, but I knew for all intents and purposes to start with I wanted to go with 2 meters testing. So uh, so if I, I've registered uh, VK2MRXC as one of my calls uh, via my local gateway. Um, and I, I will also, uh, and I think I also registered VK2 on my XG, whether that's required or not, I don't know, but I think I did it anyway. Um, and what I'll also do is go and register VK2 on my XB um, for when I'm, I'm testing with uh, 70 SAMs. Uh, getting back to the point though, so what we want to do is say repeater 1, so we're calling into VK2 MRX and we're calling in on 2 meters, so we're calling in on C. Don't worry about the spaces and all this at this point, you'll figure that out as you go. Um, so we're calling in vk 2 mrxc which is uh, effectively my analog radio that's connected up to the node adapter. I've um, titled it as such. And then we're going to use the gateway, albeit there's not a gateway, what we're saying is we want to then go through the internet. Uh, so we're connecting up via vk 2 mrx uh, 2 meters, we're going to go out through my internet connection and we're going to link over here and we're going to go to reflector 1 on the 2 meter set, two, two meter mode. We could effectively, um, this is not going to change because currently I'm, I'm transmitting and, and receiving on, on port C um, or 2 meters, but we could obviously put in any call sign here we wanted to. Um, we can put in a reflector call sign, uh, we can put in uh, somebody else's call sign. We don't know which which uh, node they're on. They can be somewhere worldwide. We've spoken to them before. Uh, we put their call sign in, and if they've come up on one of the gateways or something, um, it will actually auto route to them and and bring up their radio. So we could also go out on 70 SEMs, uh, and depending on the repeater or the gateway, or well, the repeater itself that's actually doing the broadcast from an RF perspective. We can also go out on the different ports, so we could go B for uh, 70 SEMs, um, or we could go A for 23 SEMs. Now it's going to depend on, on the gateway and the repeater that you're actually linking to, whether they actually have that um, RF functionality or not, um, but you could obviously try those ports and it would let you know whether it's successful or not. So what I'm going to do here is uh, give it the uh, link command, telling it that I want to link up to reflector number one. Uh, so you can see over here, um, I'm calling VK2RMRX, sorry, VK2MRXC, which is effectively, it would be the same as if it was a repeater. We're calling in on the frequency 145.450, and some of that other information is obviously in the background there as well. Now we're going to swing over here, and you're going to see the activity when I key up. So effectively what happens when you're using D-Star, or, or, well, I assume any other <coughs> digital uh, radio is effectively it sends information initially um, which, which is which is the header um, which includes information about your call their call the repeater and all the routing um, of the information that you're about to key up and a small message so what I'm going to do is just key up here and what we'll see is the uh, <coughs> node adapter uh, receive the instruction via RF uh, through the analog radio uh, try and interpret that instruction uh, and then action it. So we'll key up here. And the secret with D-Star is to be a little bit patient. So when you actually key up, understand that it's actually sending uh, instruction or, or information initially. Um, so the best idea is just to key up uh, and it'll wait for about three or four seconds before you actually start talking. Uh, in this instance, um, and the whole reason I want to set up my node adapter is um, I'm not going to have to worry too much about identifying and, and saying testing and all this sort of stuff. Um, I'm on fairly low power, so I'm not getting out very far. 
Um, I have tested the frequency continually to make sure that there's there's nobody using it. Um, all we're going to do is link up to the repeater, and effectively the repeater itself, or, or the gateway, the reflector in this instance, um, is going to effectively identify us um, by the digital information that we're sending uh, once we key up. So here we go. We'll see the instruction down the bottom there. Um, RF command, reflector one connection. And hopefully we'll see up the top here. And there we go. And unfortunately no activity going on there at this point. So what we're going to do is issue an unlink command. There we go. RF command U from VK2 on Rex unlinking. And you'll see we're disconnected. I'm still learning. Um, I'm just having a look down here and it's actually showing that um, it's almost reflecting a, a simplex uh, communication down this bottom right hand corner just down here. Um, so I'm going to try actually just removing uh, the VK2 RX stuff uh, from the call program or um, from the, the program or the, the memory position and see whether that makes any difference. Okay so what I've actually found is the, the program of the uh, radio for RF control is a lot simpler than I thought it was. Uh, effectively you're just operating as if you're uh, programming the radio for simplex. Um, I've got my call, just VK2MRX, so just as the name or the, the memory position name. Um, going across over here, over here, what you'll see is there's just um, the reflector that I want to connect to, uh, port C and then the link command. But I've got nothing in repeater 1 or 2, uh, and you'll say that's the same for the unlink command. Um, obviously it's just a f the same frequency that we're going to transmit on. Um, I've called it unlink, so I know what it is. Um, and then we've just got the U in the 8th character position there. Now, I know it doesn't look like 8, but it is actually the 8th character position there. Uh, and I'll just show you an example of that. So I'm going to link up to the reflector 1C again. Um, you can see currently we're sitting idle up in that top left hand corner. Going to key up the radio. Just taking the command. And you'll see connected up in the top left hand corner. Um, <clears throat> under the status there as well. Uh, and if we go back to uh, the next memory position, as you can see on the screen there, unlink, uh, and I'll just zoom out for this so you can see that part there. Um, we key up, and disconnected. Now, one of the things I've noticed in uh, DV Windows, uh, I believe it's in settings here, is so we can actually go to linking. Um, initially, uh, I <coughs> was doing what I thought was a linking command, but it wasn't working. And it was actually saying uh, linking, uh, unable to link or linking not available or something along those lines. There was a red error message popping up. So what you actually have to do is go in here and tick this box here, which is allow linking, uh, sorry, allow link unlink commands on RF. <coughs> now there is some... Uh, automatic disconnect, automatic unlink, uh, link, etc., etc. Um, after certain time frames, um, what I wanted to try was enable linking authorization filter. Um, I don't want anybody else to effectively, at this point anyway, um, be able to give commands to uh, my DV hotspot um, without my authority. Um, so what I don't want to do is actually go in here. I've configured it. Um, I've put my call in here, which is the one that I'm using via my mobile, oh, sorry, via my portable. Um, I've ticked the box here, allow stations listed. Uh, you can block stations listed as well if you want to go the other way by the look of it. Um, so I'm going to save that, save that, and we're going to just see whether that worked, whether it recognises me. So I'm going to try. Go. and the good news is it's worked it's come up and it's allowed me to give the command 